Yeah. Because that's the last thing. You know, there's a difference between being hungry and being ambitious. And so this whole career niche thing that's formed, um, I'm, I'm glad that I, I feel blessed by the fact that I, I, I wasn't here for that. This was before all that. So you were just doing your passion and sharing your passion. And that's what I'm and doing today. Yes. And whenever I deviate from that, you know, I've never sold as many books as when I didn't even know what bestseller, best, the, the phrase bestseller wasn't even on my radar in those days. I, I was I wouldn't say I was an idiot savant, but I was innocent by you know I was I was you know it's when the um, <clears throat> in the beginner's luck is the Zen mind, the beginner's mind. yes I, I I had a beginner's luck and then it was a Zen mind. I, I had nothing I was there was no self-will there because I didn't think there was anything to have self-will for because this career niche didn't exist. Yes. so in my life, and and this is principle. This has nothing to do with just my story or just that time in my life. So in my life today, anytime I deviate from that, I my my good is diminished on every level. And anytime I return to that is when abundance happens. I think you said something earlier, I can't remember. Oh, when you came and you wanted a certain something, yeah. what you got back was not the highest level. Right. It's when you were empty of all that and you'd Absolutely. seen what life what life was really about. And so you weren't buying into all this. And I think also early in my career, because <clears throat> right when I started lecturing, I started lecturing here in Los Angeles in 1983 at a place called the Philosophical Research Society. Not long after that, the AIDS epidemic burst onto the scene. And it took a while for the organized religious institutions to work through their own stuff. And it took a while for Western medicine to find anything helpful. And during that time, there was this then young woman over in a corner of Los Angeles and Los Feliz talking about a God who loves you no matter what, who works miracles. So in a very real way, gay men in Los Angeles gave me my career, mm -hmm. that love relationship. So the fact that very early in my work doing that, there was an experience of such seriousness and suffering it's not even that it burned away any falsehood. The falsehood of that kind never had a chance to emerge because it was so real from the beginning. Like when you were talking about having seen the world, seeing what's really happening. So this whole, I want to be this, I want to be that stuff just... So your whole life was organic. <clears throat> you just were following your passion and then one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. And that's not even a was, it's an is. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know, in, in, in the real world, there is no time. You know, the past is only in your mind, the future is only in your mind. So every moment I either reenact that or I don't. And when I do, incredible things happen. I always say, when I practice what I preach, my life really works. <laughs> You know, the one I do that, it's, you know, it's as true today that. as it was, you know, 30 years ago. Yes, and yes. when I don't, you know, I have limited, you know, the concept. It, it's really a law, cause and effect. And yeah. It's absolutely true. I feel the same way. Anytime I actually, following my own advice or just being in the moment, being present, my life unfolds. Anytime being, I try to manipulate it, it's And being just, present for the right reason. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Just to yes. stand in Thank a space you. of emptiness and how might I serve? Yes. And that, you, you can't stand in that and be ambitious for a spiritual career at yes. the same time. Or say, let me study this person. <clears throat> what is she doing? Because I'm going to start copying her. So many people go to your class going, I just love watching her and how she does it so I could... Well, you know, listen, I'm, I'm honored by that. I mean, I do think... Absolutely, because you're a pro. You really touch audiences when you speak, oh, and that you. is the key to being a good speaker. And, and thank you for that. And though there's also something beautiful as you become older, that there are people in generations behind you. Mm -hmm. um, and I am at that point in my life where I get to be on some level, if not personally, then at least in a public role, a kind of mentor. And so I'm very... Um, pleased to see this kind of younger generation of these young priestesses, you know. Yes. So I'm honored by that. Don't get me wrong. I think that's really kind of beautiful. And and everybody speaks from their own generational experience. Yes. Um, but thank you for sharing that. The key is really for everyone to be the best them they can be. Yeah. Not to try to reach out or try to do this, try to do that, well, but to I, almost. Yeah. I mean, I. Yes. I'm sorry. Embody it. <clears throat> 
<laughs> get to know them, really be in the moment, and what do you have to say, and how what's natural for you? You know, well, you can be inspired by someone, but not. Well, I, I hope that one of the things that that I am demonstrating that other younger people are picking up is that I don't just start talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. There is a specific teaching that I have been reading for years, and I teach based on that. And there is such a spiritual dilettantism in the world today that I don't believe particularly serves. A little bit of principle here and a little bit of principle there, and this one's convenient, and this one feels good, and that one, oh, we take too much work on my part, or that one it would take too much of my having to face things. So if there's anything that my career is demonstrating that would please me to think, it's people knowing that it is more than just getting up and being yourself. That it is studying a particular uh, discipline, reading, studying, working. Um, I, I, you know, nobody's expecting us to be perfect. Yes. But I think people are expecting have, and have a right to expect that we're trying our best to get it right. So I hope that that is something that is reading and I and I believe that it is mm hmm so you are now teaching about spirituality and relationships and you have an upcoming seminar yeah for Valentine's Day will you tell me a little bit about yes that? I'd be glad to you know A Course in Miracles I always say A Course in Miracles talks about everything without talking about anything specifically mm -hmm. and it says the you think you have many different problems but you really only have one and that is your separation from God so we tend to categorize. Can we, can I, we back up a little? What is your definition of God <clears throat> when you say separation from God? I don't think the word God can be defined. I, I like the way in Alcoholics Anonymous they talk about God as you understand Him. The Course in Miracles says this Course does not aim to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It aims to remove the barriers that you hold against its coming. The Course is not a religion. There's no religion here. There's no doctrine here. There's no dogma. It's not a belief that is the issue here. It's an experience that's the issue here.